Hey Rat Bags, it's Jade. Welcome to another Core Keeper Guide today, taking a look at defeating the fourth boss, Aceos the Sky Titan. Absolutely the hardest boss fight I've come across, as you would expect being the fourth one. But yeah, this was pretty tough, although I did manage to do it on my second slash third try. I'm going to give you the top tips on how to take out this flying big colourful bird. Let's go. So you can't find Aceos until you've actually gone and defeated the other three bosses and activated the core. Then you will get a hologram sort of NPC that you can craft and place and he'll sell two items, the location beacon and also a shiny egg. The Titan scanner itself costs five ancient gemstones, five mechanical parts and ten ancient feathers. Now the feathers you find mostly in the Aceos biome, although sometimes you can find them in the Forgotten Ruins, and they're these little tiny yellow and blue sticks on the ground. This is actually the arena, so you'll find a whole bunch of them here, but obviously by this point you don't need the scanner, obviously, because you found the boss. So yeah, it's a bit redundant having so many here. They're definitely a little bit more scarce, you're going to have to really look out for them when you're exploring the Aceos biome, and like I said, some of the Forgotten Ruins. But obviously go ahead and buy this from the NPC, and you should be able to then go ahead and find him. If you don't know to craft the hologram, you're going to need 10 ancient gemstones and 10 mechanical parts. Now, you can't actually fight the Titan until you've crafted the egg. I thought this was just a decorative item, but nope. You need 10 copper bars, 10 tin bars, 10 iron bars, 10 scarlet bars, 5 gold bars, and 3 ancient gemstones. And it's important to note that once you've summoned it, you will lose this egg. So if you die and have to keep taking on the boss, you will have to keep crafting this over and over again. So it could get really expensive unless you follow my tips. So once you do find the arena and you've headed there, you can go ahead and scout the place out. You won't have to worry about the boss suddenly dropping on you. And then fingers crossed, you can get prepared. There'll be a big circle with usually not any ways to get across to the other side. So you do want to plug these gaps in. That's one thing I found on my first run. I definitely need to get across because of some of the mechanics of the boss. So get bridges, find some sand, anything that you can use, ground, and just fill in as many of the gaps as possible, or at least do little bridges in each kind of direction. So north, south, east, west, and maybe at some point in between all of them. When it comes to prep, I went for critical hit stuff. You've got the Scarlet Armor, it gives you bonuses to critical hit damage. When you combine that with the little knife that you can craft, I do believe it's one of the best weapons. Although your weapons will use a lot of durability fighting this boss, so you may need to bring at least two or three of them. Especially if you don't have any Scarlet weapons for some reason, I really wouldn't attempt this without them. In fact, I'm pretty inclined to think you're meant to craft the big big sword that you can get by getting all the different parts of it in the Forgotten Ruins and the Aceos spine before taking them on. But yeah, you can do it with Scarlet stuff. I'm sure there's some pros out there that have done it with just a wooden pickaxe. You always get them triads. But yeah, I would recommend Scarlet armor and a Scarlet knife. And like I said, any foods that give you bonuses or buffs towards critical hit. And obviously that goes the same for some of your accessories. The copper cross necklace is pretty good as well to have and making sure you've got the feather so you can give you a little bit of a boost in dodging. I'm not sure how much damage you can actually stop using a shield but I didn't really attempt that way. I was just relying on speed, moving around and being pretty nimble with them critical hits. Then simply place the egg down and the titan will spawn and it will pretty much hover in different positions. It doesn't do any damage to you if you get close to it, it's these blue beams that will actually ruin you. So if you get hit by them it will take around 40% of your health. So you've got to be able to dodge and move quickly. You will be able to learn and work out exactly how they move and I would say after a bit of practice and as long as you've got stuff that can just help you move quickly then you'd be able to dodge them no problem. It doesn't really ever go too turbo either, there's only a few moments where it got a bit worse. Now you see the crystals that were spawned nearby and the light going into it, that's replenishing its health. So you've got to destroy them with a pickaxe. You probably won't have high enough mining skill to do it with anything else. So you do need a scarlet pickaxe, I would imagine. Or you might even be able to get away with an iron one. But yeah, I would absolutely bring a scarlet one here. And you're meant to take them out. So there are different stages and times when you can do this. But obviously, you don't want to be wasting time hitting him when there's loads of these crystals around. Because they're just going to keep replenishing his health. 
Now I've sped the footage up, but I spent at least 12 minutes trying to fight this guy like this. And I was doing okay, you have just kind of got to whittle him down. I'm sure, like I said, if you found this special sword that you can get once you found all the pieces for it, then that might be a bit easier to take him out. I did try using bombs on my second attempt, but it wouldn't let me place any of them on this actual surface. So once I realised that this is the way to go, we've just got to time it right, make sure there's not too many of the crystals, and then go and take him out. And obviously you can see I haven't got any of the bridges in the actual gaps here so it made it quite hard to go around and actually take some of these crystals out and so after 12 minutes of fighting him then yeah my weapons my armor it was all losing its durability i'd lost some of my best healing items and it was game over so this time preparing properly put a chest somewhere quite high it will actually do a lot of damage to the surrounding areas of the grass so you do need to leave a little bit of a base a little bit of an area just a bit north and make sure you've got a bed so that you can replenish your health before you start the fight and if you do get killed you might be quick enough to run back to the arena before the boss despawns so I did have to craft two eggs to summon him again, but when I actually put my bed closer and died this time, I was able to respawn super close, run back in, pick up my stuff and carry on the fight because the Titan hadn't actually disappeared. Last couple of things to note as well that this area obviously may be surrounded by enemies like the more advanced cavelings as well as the poison slimes. So you don't really want them messing with you but it does look like the beams of light will actually harm and destroy them as well. So you should be okay in this centre part, it's only if you have to go exploring a bit further across the chasm here that you might run into a few of them slimes that have kind of appeared. And then that was it, I just made sure I had plenty of the potions that make you a little bit more harder to kill with armour, lots of health potions, lots of foods like I said that give me critical hit as well as being able to move quickly and utilising the feather to go ahead and dodge and move around. I'm not particularly overpeed, my sort of fighter character is only like level 30 something, so yeah I don't think I'm that big and you can see he does replenish a lot of his health so you really have got to get used to destroying his crystals before waiting on him. But if you spend too long taking out every crystal you generally won't necessarily be having to have time to go and actually do any damage to him. So you kind of got to take out the ones closest to him if he spawns across to another area, double check there aren't too many around that point and then just get in and utilise hitting him in between these little showers of the light. They can be dodgy but you get used to it moving around, looking for the big gaps and then wading in. Now the dagger combined with the three pieces of the Scarlet Armour gives you a massive critical hit bonus. The only problem with the armour though is it only works if you're killing an enemy. So there could be an argument that says actually it'd be better to have a different set of armour. Maybe if you found the full set of the Cavelin armour as that gives you lots of dodge chance ability. Or even going full iron would give you a lot of health and a lot of armour as well. So really it is the knife that's doing a lot of the work here because it does stack up the critical hit damage with it. You get 24% extra critical hit damage with the knife, whereas you only get 11 critical hit damage with the actual sword, but you may need both. There is also an argument that says you should be doing this with maybe a ranger class, hence why it's good not to get too close to them and just fire off shots. But yeah, I would still say that would take a long time. I had tried the grub zooka on him as well, it weren't doing that much damage, and obviously the musket does a fair amount, but yeah, you've got to be really good with aiming it, and I still think it's way too slow to really cause an impact. But you can see I've got it down to half health now, or just over, and I'm utilising the bridges to get across. That one's probably the most dangerous when they spawn super close to him like that, because they can just go off in any random direction, whereas these ones, as long as you get a bit of distance, they're actually a lot easier to dodge. So that's probably the worst one. You can see one hit has reduced my health by about 35% there. All the other bosses, every time you get them to a certain point, they rage up and they do more attacks. I didn't really notice too much of a difference with this guy. Maybe it's because I was just getting him so close anyway, or maybe he's meant to spawn more crystals and it makes it harder. You can see he's definitely changed colour, but yeah, it actually didn't produce anything as I was expecting. I was expecting like a mad, huge amount of these beams or something, but nope, it was kind of just the same attacks. If maybe a little bit quicker, maybe the beams are moving. Food stuffs you should think about are anything with the special fish that you can get from the ACOS biome as well. Some of them give some great critical hit bonuses like 16%, but eventually you wet them down and he's done. 
I was a bit disappointed with the loot. You do get a soul power, which is meant to give you like a 10% chance of getting some sort of thunder damage when meleeing weapons or creatures. I must have killed about 100 slimes and I didn't actually see it pop out once. Although I did see some big, nice, chunky critical hit numbers, but no actual effect. And then I did get the Ancient Pickaxe, which is obviously better than the Scarlet Pickaxe, although still not tough enough to break through the Mold Spores. So it looks like I'm going to have to actually increase my mining skill before I can break into the next biome. Unless there's something I'm missing and you only actually get to go and find the entrances in a certain direction. Return to the core and you'll be told that the next soul is still being shaped by the makers of this world. There are another two bosses to go and find. I do believe though they're kind of basically harder versions of Glurch and the Abominable Mass. Or is that Glurch and Gorm? Both of them. Basically the Worm and the King Slime. You'll ha find harder variants of them in the world. And yeah, a few ancient coins. You know, some maybe... And yeah, the rest of the loot, yeah, I was a bit disappointed. A few ancient coins, some gold ore, some uh, scarlet ore, and that was it. I guess maybe if I go and farm the boss, I think you can, then maybe I'll get a chance to get a more rarer weapon, just like you can when defeating more of the bosses again. But considering how tough it is to find him and go through them biomes and stuff, yeah, the ancient pickaxe is great, it is, but I was just a bit disappointed. But there we go, that's how I defeated ASIOS. If you've got any guaranteed tips, what kind of methods did you use, what kind of builds were you using, absolutely let me know and check out my bosses guides coming soon. I'm going to be farming all of them and giving you definitive, absolutely the best 100% ways to cheese or take them on super easy. Until next time, Ratbags, check out all the rest of the Core Keeper content and I'll see you later.